welcome to the first Basement Critic with myself, SNF. And myself, M. Trace. Today we will be talking about Rogue Legacy by Cellar Door Games. We have two other videos that we've done covering boss strategies and also a breakdown of the classes, so check them out. And Trace, would you give us an overview here of, of what is Rogue Legacy? Alright, just so everyone's on the same page, Rogue Legacy is a procedurally generated roguelite game that plays something like Castlevania. Throughout the game's death and air cycle, you build up your family's mansion, armory, and rune inventory for bonuses that persist after death, such that you assist the next generation delving into Castle Hampson. And this is a 2D throwback to games like Castlevania, like you stated. The graphics are... they're old school. They are. They're uh, sprite-based, and a lot of people might get turned off by it if they're, if they're into, like, the frilly AAA titles with really cutting-edge 3D graphics and stuff. But that's not to say that the game is ugly by any means, by my opinion. It, uh... it... It's oozing polish. It's oozing it like a like a pustule. It's disgusting, yet beautiful. So you don't need a five hundred dollar <laughs> graphics card to run this game. That's the beauty of it, because I threw this thing on my old laptop and it played just fine. And I could go wherever I wanted and just hook up my controller and go to town. So, despite the fact that it's a retro-looking game, the animations, like you were talking about, they're perfect. Yeah, the uh, the animations are, are really they're really smooth. You can tell they they put a lot of a lot of effort into beefing up the the frames for each animation. Uh, I've seen other 2D games, 2D indie games that came out recently, and they just have like a choppy like two frame movement or whatever, and it just it looks it looks kind of like crap just to be honest, but Rogue Legacy, like, everything looks smooth, and it, it's just really, it's really tight. And it's really important for a game like this, almost like a 2D fighter, because when you get into the gameplay, and when you get into the castle itself, and you start fighting some of the enemies, positioning is super important, and your motions and the animations of the sprite are really, really crucial to being able to play the game successfully. And the fact that they are so solid, the animations, is great. And the gameplay itself is also awesome. Oh yeah, the, the most common comparison is to... The, people call it Metroidvania. Um, I hear that a lot about this game, but I, I for one, would argue that it, it has more... The gameplay has more in common with, uh, like, Mega Man X than, than those games. And... You might think that's not really that big of a difference, but if you go back and play those games, they're, they feel a little clunky, and I'm not sure if that's because of the way they meant to design the game, but they feel sluggish, and you don't get any of that in Rogue Legacy, just like you didn't get it in Mega Man back in the day, and that, that's why it's a blast to play. It's just, it's tight, and it's fast, and it's, it's perfect for, for what kind of game it is. So... The gameplay is also difficult, and you are going to die a lot in the beginning. It is inevitable. As soon as you get into the game, into the first level, you're going to die. Not because the game's unfair, but because it takes a while to learn the mechanics of the game itself. And while the game is difficult, I think it's difficult in a game like Dark Souls, where the difficulty in Dark Souls comes from not knowing what you're getting into. And the difficulty with Rogue Legacy is actually learning the skills and having the ability to plow through the rooms successfully. And some people, some people can do that. I mean, there are guys who do level zero clears of the castle, right? Yeah, those, <laughs> those guys are inhuman, man. But, um, like, most of the time you're gonna end up farming a little bit and, you know, it's, it's okay. Everybody has to do it. I had to do it. But the the thing is, like it, there's never there's never really like a, a gear check boss or a gear check area of the dungeon. Whenever you, whenever you die, you feel like it's your fault. It's not the game's fault ever. It's it's not because you don't have enough equipment or stats or whatever built up. You just fucked up. You just messed up. But the game plays so well that you won't really even care about that, and you'll you'll just go get right back into the castle. 
just as a side note here, I actually enjoyed farming because one of the aspects of this game that I really enjoy is the sense of accomplishment for completing small tasks and even like menial tasks like farming because in the beginning you won't accumulate much wealth and that wealth eventually then despite your character dying will pass on to your heirs in the form of equipment and runes and upgrades but you just feel for me personally I felt a sense of accomplishment for getting that first thousand gold run and buying a couple of upgrades it just feels good so the farming itself was never a chore for me yeah, there was there was countless runs for me where I was just like I didn't even care about bosses. I was just going through the the whole castle just to to clear everything and try to get some more runes to to try to pimp my guy out and play a little differently. And the majority of the time I spent in this game was just farming because it was fun. It's simple and it's actually kind of addicting. And there is such a variety of upgrades. I mean, it, there, there's a vast variety of upgrades, and combine that with the different classes, which you can learn more about in our other video we have posted. You have a vast level of customization and ways to play, and that's part of the fun of this game. Alright, so who this game is for? The bottom line, I think this game is for anybody who has 15 bucks in their pocket. It's really accessible due to how simplistic the combat is, but it's the difficulty that really draws you into the game and it, it makes it enticing for the the guy who wants some casual 15 minute play session or someone looking for a hardcore time sink and you you get that here no matter what you want I agree with you um, sometimes you you might only be given a 15 minute window of time to play because you're gonna die so this is for someone who wants a challenge but like you said that the systems are simple so anyone can pick this up. It takes a little practice to get good, but it is a game for anyone. I think it's a great game. Me personally, I would say that some people could consider it ugly, and I think that's a valid criticism. Graphics whore. This was a game that I did not think I would enjoy, and I ended up really liking it. And me as someone who prefers the games that take a $500 graphics card, this game was a pleasant <laughs> surprise. It consumed my soul for a period of a couple of weeks, don't play it if you don't like women with beards, because there are a lot of those. And if you don't want a fairly difficult game, because it is difficult, and it could consume your soul. I didn't mention uh, the IBS suffering heirs, or the... Uh, what is the one where you're upside down? That's a great one. Uh, Vertigo. Vertigo. If you want a real challenge while playing Rogue Legacy, you level zero clearing inhuman freaks... Play Vertigo. It and totally changes and, the game. And don't turn your monitor upside down either. <laughs> I challenge you. Challenge all of you. There are little aspects of the game like that that just make it a completely different game. And and that's what's so cool about it. There's so many ways to play it. There's a variety of ways to customize your character. There's many different classes. There's equipment. There's runes. I mean, it's great. Alright, so uh, Siskel and Ebert, thumbs up. I give it a Charon out of 10. That guy's loaded. <sighs> Probably has a couple million of my gold. <laughs> asshole. <laughs> Fucking asshole. Fucking ghost asshole gatekeeper. They're gonna release a DLC where uh, Charon's, like, the secret boss. I would buy that. I would play that DLC. Just to kill him. Charon to of farm. the Abyss. <laughs> <laughs> Charon of the Abyss. Alright guys, thanks for listening to the first Basement Critic. If you like what you saw here, head on over to our channel and check out our other videos. Until next time. Sissies.